academic journals dedicated to studying flags. And usually a standard is a term that is applied for a flag for a monarch or for another royal individual or just an individual person. So this might be royalty, this might be nobility, but it might also be a president of a republic or another government official as well. Now today we're going to be looking at standards primarily in the context of royalty. But we can sometimes see the term standard used also for military flags. So you might have heard a standard, uh, the term used when we're talking about military flags. So that's a little bit different. But the context of a personal flag is to contrast with a national flag. So earlier Ron was talking a little bit about the Hawaiian national flag, and now we're going to be looking at something more specific, the standards. One thing to always keep in mind about terminology is that it is not fixed. So the term standard is not always used, and in some countries, because of the royal connotation of standard, the term wouldn't be used at all. You might use the term presidential flag or could be in the United States a Secretary of Defense's flag. Uh, but standard is a reference to an individual. Now I want to show you a few present day examples and then kind of connect those to some of the Hawaiian royal standards that we'll be looking at in just a few moments. So if we take a look here at this flag, this is the British royal standard. It's probably the most famous royal standard in the world. And this design dates back to 1837. And it's actually about the same time that the first Hawaiian royal standard was created. Now, even though you've, if you've seen the flags that are on display, this flag doesn't look anything like it, but there are actually some connections. So that's one of the things I'd like to do today is to draw some of those connections between the flags that we can see on display today and an international context. Okay. Next we have the flag of the President of Russia. So yes, this is Vladimir Putin's flag. Um, and you'll also notice that it looks very different from the Hawaiian flags that we saw in the exhibit, but there are also connections. So we'll talk about that a little bit later, about designs and similarities uh, among all of these different royal, uh, royal or presidential standards. And then the last one here is the flag of the American president. So maybe you've seen this at a news conference or maybe even on the president's car. If you've ever seen the videos of the Kennedy assassination, this flag was actually flying uh, on the car. So even though all of these flags look very different uh, from the Hawaiian royal standard, they are actually in some way similar and we will explore a little about that later. So where did this idea come from, the idea of having flags for individual people? We can go all the way back to the Middle Ages in Europe, when monarchs would fly banners and placed uh, these images on their coats of arms. And today we'll see that the Hawaiian royal standard, for instance, includes a coat of arms which is very common for standards. And actually, even in the American presidential flag, the emblem that you see in the center is the seal, which would be the equivalent of a coat of arms for a president. Now, hundreds of years ago, back in the Middle Ages, these royal flags were essentially national flags because monarchs embodied the nation, and there were no separate flags for countries. Monarchs had their flags, those flags would embody the nation. But in our modern age, when we have things like nationalism, royal standards became different from national flags. So royal standards would come to embody a person, a, a royal family, or another individual in contrast to a nation as a whole. So this is something that we see in the Kingdom of Hawaii. There was, of course, a national flag and a royal standard as well, and also personal standards that were used by different members of the royal family. So now we might think back in terms of a Hawaiian context, when was the first royal standard created? Now if you know a little bit about the history of the Hawaiian flag, it was created very early in the kingdom's history during the time of Kamehameha I. And it wasn't too long after that that the first royal standard was created. 
It was the time of Kamehameha III. So before we look at the flag, I want to mention some challenges also, some of the issues that come up when we look at things like old flags. We're very uh, fortunate today to be able to actually see some of the flags on display. But many of the physical specimens of Hawaiian standards from the 19th century and other flags from the 19th century, they just don't exist anymore because of time and age and such. Um, we may only have written descriptions. And these can be very tricky when we look at things like color, for example. So the group that was working on this project, we had a big discussion about the colors that were used in some of these flags. Did they deteriorate over time? As you know, one of the ones on display was involved also in a fire that could discolor the cloth as well. So sometimes that means that not every single detail is going to be known. Also, it means that uh, when we think back about written descriptions from the 19th century, people even at the time might have made mistakes too. So if you've read the newspaper recently, you probably know that mistakes are made all the time in the newspaper, especially specific descriptions or use of colors or even knowledge about what flags were used for. Right? Because a person writing a newspaper article or doing a television program may not be familiar. So we always need to be very careful uh, when looking at descriptions and also even at old photographs as well. Of course, as you know, they weren't in color, so that gives us some challenges also. Okay, so let's get back to our story. Uh, the earliest written description that we have of the Hawaiian Royal Standard comes from the time of Kamehameha III. And Ron, if you read his article in the Hawaiian Airlines Magazine article, he talked a little bit about it. Uh, it is a reference uh, from April of 1837 to a banner that was hoisted on a ship which transported the remains of Princess Nahienaena to Maui. So this is the first example that we have, a written example of a Hawaiian royal standard. But as is often the case when we look at documents or uh, stories from the 19th century, this article that gave this description doesn't give a description of the flag itself. So we don't have an existing illustration. So its relationship to subsequent royal standards and its origins and history are not entirely known. A few years later, in July of 1843, there is another mention made of a possible Hawaiian royal standard. And it's in conjunction with an event that I'm sure you're all familiar with, which is the event that took place at Thomas Square when the sovereignty of the kingdom was restored to Kamehameha III after the period of British occupation. A contemporary source from the time says that a royal standard was raised at Thomas Square. Now a few things to be careful about, the use of that term. Sometimes the term standard was used to describe a flag or just a banner and not necessarily a specific royal standard. So sometimes we see, even in contemporary accounts, uh, interchangeability of words. But this flag that was uh, hoisted at Thomas Square in July of 1843 is different from the Hawaiian national flag. The flag used at Thomas Square is described as a Hawaiian flag. So the arrangement of stripes before 1845 sometimes varied. Um, flags were handmade, of course. There's an 1845 law that uh, gives a specific description of the order of the stripes. But before that, that sometimes varied. And on the flag was placed an image of a dove and an olive branch. Another source says this emblem was a crown and an olive branch. So here you can see it's kind of hard to reconcile these old descriptions, whether uh, one of them is accurate and the other isn't, or did somebody at sea from one perspective and not another. So it might have had an image that looked something uh, like that. So we don't know exactly what this flag looked like because if there are no photographs of it and it doesn't exist anymore, but it's possible that it was an early Hawaiian royal standard. But in my opinion, I think it was probably just a banner, a special banner that was created for the Thomas Square ceremony because it's quite different 
from the royal banners and royal standards that come later. So now we're going to see the official documentation that was used in 1845 for the first fully documented Hawaiian royal standard. And you can see that it looked quite different from the national flag with a dove emblem. So this flag was most likely designed by somebody in the British Royal Navy. So there is a letter from May of 1845 from the Hawaiian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Robert Wiley, who you may be familiar with, a letter written to Sir Thomas Thompson. He was the captain of a British ship that was docked in Honolulu at the time. And this is the first definitively known description of a royal standard of the Hawaiian kingdom, dating back to uh, 1845. It's the same time that the flag law is passed to give specific information about the national flag. And Foreign Minister Wiley writes in his letter, Sir, I am commanded by the king, meaning Kamehameha III, to make known to you his majesty's thanks for the kind courtesy with which you have allowed one of your men to prepare his royal standard for the king according to the national devices arranged at the Herald's office in London. Wiley further explains that the royal standard will, quote, be hoist hoisted for the very first time on the solemn occasion of the opening of the Legislative Assembly Chambers on Tuesday next by His Majesty in person. So this is a full description. It's not too specific, so I'll give you a little bit more information on why we think it looked like this um, based on some photographic evidence that comes from the Kalakaua dynasty and some other uh, written evidence as well. So this flag that we see here, the royal standard that was created in 1845, was used from the time of Kamehameha III until the reign of Liliuokalani. All Hawaiian monarchs use this as the royal standard. So what can we see here in this image of the flag? We see the stripes, of course, from the Hawaiian national flag. And in the center, on a white rectangle, we see a form of the Hawaiian Kingdom coat of arms. Now I'm going to show you a drawing, which is probably from the 1840s. This is, as far as I know, if anyone has other information, this is always something, one of the great things about having this kind of an exhibition is that people have additional information and things that maybe uh, are not yet known to the public. Uh, this is a drawing from the reign of Kamehameha III, probably from the 1840s, showing the king's yacht, uh, which was called Kamehameha III, flying the royal standard. Okay, so if we look at the image on the top of the ship, it looks very similar to the image that I showed you previously. But there's one uh, question or one concern, and that is the coat of arms. It's kind of hard to see what exactly is depicted there in the coat of arms. So from photos from the Kalakaua dynasty and from the flags that you saw on display, you see only one part of the coat of arms. A simplified version showing a shield and the crown on the top. But the, in heraldry or the use of coat of arms is a special term called an achievement, a heraldic achievement. And that's the full coat of arms. So you've probably seen that with the bearers on either side and the feather cape behind. That is the full, what was called the full achievement of the coat of arms. I have a image of it here. So it's a little bit different than what we saw on the flag. On the flags that you saw inside, you see the shield and the crown, but you don't see the other emblems from the coat of arms. So that's one question that's maybe still open from the time of the Kamehameha dynasty. Did the central emblem have the entire coat of arms or just the shield with the crown? We can't be sure because this drawing uh, just is not clear enough to know. Also, one thing is you've also seen as you've been looking at the flags, they were all hand done. So every one of them would have looked a little bit different. So when you hear, well, did the crown look exactly like this or that? You can see that they differed, right? So somebody has 
uh, made the crown in a way, maybe artistic license, which is perfectly fine, but every one of the flags is going to be a little bit different. My own personal guess is it was probably like what we see today, just because that's simpler to put on a flag. Can you imagine back in the middle of the 19th century trying to put all of those elements onto a flag? It would probably be pretty difficult. Okay, so we kind of have an idea of the first standard. We see this was used from Kamehameha III to the reign of Liliuokalani, but what was it used for? Foreign Minister Wiley also gave a description of what the royal standard was used for. So there were minutes from a Privy Council meeting in November of 1849, and Wiley gives a list of things that are, are times when the royal standard would be used. It was to fly at sea on all vessels on which a Hawaiian king, queen, or any of their children was present. So one thing that we can learn from that is the royal standard was used by the monarch, but also by other members of the royal family. So the Privy Council notes describe the queen and also any royal children that might have been present. Wiley also wrote that the royal standard is to be hosted from the royal yacht. As you can see, probably that image, in fact, is of the royal yacht. From sunrise to sunset when it is anchored at port. So one important use was of the royal standard at sea on ships. In addition to use at sea, Wiley specifies that the royal standard is to be used when a king, queen, or any of their children is in attendance at certain public events. So that would be use on land. So we know from these descriptions that the royal, fa the royal standard uh, represents the institution of the Hawaiian monarchy, not only the person of the sovereign, because it was used in certain circumstances when the sovereign may not have been present. We also know that by the time of the Kalakaua dynasty, the royal standard was also flown over Iolani Palace. So another land use of the royal standard. So we're very fortunate to have those, the Kalakaua standard, dynasty standards, on display for you folks to see today. Now here, this was the only color photograph that I could find, besides the flags that we see on display here, of a standard, Hawaiian royal standard in color. This is a photo from the Bishop Museum, probably taken in the 1950s. It's actually a postcard. So it was probably sold at the Bishop Museum. Um, and you can see a Kalakaua era standard uh, behind the thrones. These are actually the replicas, the 1930s era replicas of the thrones. And you can see the colors here. So that's one of the advantages of this is that we can actually see the colors in the flag. So you'll notice that this is very similar to the ones that we saw or we see on display today uh, on, in the exhibit. You'll also notice the coat of arms. Each one of them is a little bit different. So if you look very carefully at those flags on display, you'll notice the crowns are different. You'll notice even the placement of the quarters from the coat of arms are different too. So there's no, I've never seen any written documentation about that. I suspect that it was just the choice of the person making the flag, that they would have looked a little bit different. Again, we need to remember hand sewn, right? not made in a factory someplace. Uh, somebody would have had to put it together by hand. The royal standard from its inception was a very important symbol of the Hawaiian monarchy. In fact, it's mentioned twice in the Constitution of 1852, where the flag is talked about and is also referenced along with the national flag. So Article 40 of the 1852 Constitu uh, Constitution declares that the royal standard and national flag were, quote, maintained as now established. So actually written into the Constitution. Article 46 of the Constitution noted that the Kuhina Nui, so a position that was sort of like a chief minister, was the keeper of the kingdom's great seal along with the royal standard 
and the national flag. So it had great importance to be mentioned twice in the 1852 Constitution. Now besides this royal standard that we see, the Hawaiian monarchy used some other flags as well, and that's what we're going to look at now. These date from the Kalakaua dynasty. So the only flag that we definitively know existed uh, before the Kalakaua dynasty is what I will refer to as the striped standard. So the stripes from the national flag with a coat of arms in the center. So used from the time of Kamehameha III and by all subsequent monarchs. What about other royal flags? First, the monarch's personal standard. So this is what, for sake of convenience, we'll call the white standard. Although this is one thing, if you're in there and you're looking at the flags and taking a look at the color, is it actually white? And there are all these issues about age of the fabric. And as you know, one of the flags was involved in a fire um, as well. So this is an ongoing discussion. Uh, but we'll call it the white standard for now. So what we see here is per the personal standard of Kalakabwa. It shows the simplified version of the coat of arms on a white background. Okay, so here we see the stripes are not there, only the coat of arms. This white standard did not replace the royal standard. The stripe standard was still in use during the Kalakawa dynasty. So if we look at this photo here from the 1880s, this is a photo of the king's boathouse. And the only photo where I could find the two flags together so you can see uh, clock was personal standard in the back. So the white background with a coat of arms. And then if you look to the side, you can see the striped standard. So we see the stripes and the coat of arms uh, in the center as well. So what the photograph shows us is that the two flags existed at the same time. One did not replace uh, the other. The white standard is introduced later, probably in 1880. There is a newspaper article uh, from November of 1880 discussing what is reported as the first appearance of this flag for the king's birthday in 1880. And it reads, the white standard of the Hawaiian sovereign was flung to the breeze from a lofty flagpole erected upon the central tower of the front facade of the new palace, so this is the new Iolani Palace, on the 16th instant. This is the first time that that royal standard has been hoisted upon the new palace. So this is the, uh, as we saw just a moment ago, the personal flag of Kalakabwa. And this is also the flag that uh, we have on display, the one that was used during the world tour. Just speculating, I think this flag might have been created for the world tour because the world tour was going to be uh, the first time the king would be shown on an international stage and to have this personal flag uh, might have been important as well. So it's created right around the time of the king's world tour. The white standard is also used in 1886 for the 50th Jubilee. So, oops. I'm going in the wrong direction. Here we can see Iolani Palace uh, decorated in 1886 for the King's Jubilee. And we can see the white flag, the personal flag, draped in front of Iolani Palace. The flag was also flown over the palace for the King's Jubilee in 1886. In fact, there were three different flags that were flown over the palace for the Jubilee in 1886. The personal flag, or what we'll call the white standard, the royal standard, which is the striped standard, and also the Hawaiian national flag. So a description from uh, 1886 says, from the several turrets, meaning of the palace, were exhibited His Majesty's private insignia, the royal standard, and the national ensign floating gaily in the breeze, all three flags. Another newspaper article says the royal standard, the national ensign, and his majesty's private flag were displayed from the different turrets of the palace. And that was recreated 
for the first time in November of 2014. So every year you may see the palace decorated for the king's birthday, but in previous years just the Hawaiian national flag flew from the turrets. But here we can see uh, the correct flags flying as they did in 1886 and understand their meaning. So in the far left we see the national flag, unfortunately it's not blowing in the wind. Uh, in the center, we see the king's personal standard, or the white standard, and on the far right-hand side, we see the royal standard as well. So this replicates what was shown in 1886 with the three different uh, flags flying over the palace. Now, when Kalaakaua died in 1891, the white standard was also used by Queen Liliuo Kalani as her personal standard. So let's take a look at this interesting photo. This is from 1929 uh, for the dedication of the Aloha Oi monument that is at Washington Place. And take a look at that flag there. That is the white standard. We see the coat of arms in the center and we see the white background. Uh, in the newspaper, it was reported that the unveiling consisted of removing from the face of the memorial the Hawaiian flag which had flown from the flagstaff of Iolani Palace at the time of the overthrow. So that is also, it's, it's a little bit hard to know whether it was this design or this actual flag itself. Another, Yes, I'm going to tell you who the people are in just a second. I know that I knew everyone would ask about who those people are, so I did. I do have that information from you, for you. Uh, another article says from the flagpole in the grounds of Washington Place floated a Hawaiian crown flag, such as was flown when Liliuo Kalani was sovereign, and over the tablet was draped another crown flag. So of course we know there were multiple uh, copies of this flag. So to answer the question, who are the people? So from left to right, we have Maria Mitchell, representing the daughters and sons of Hawaiian warriors. A.P. Taylor, who is custodian of the Hawaii Territorial Archives. Lawrence Judd, governor of the Territory of Hawaii. And Mrs. A.P. Taylor, premier of the daughters and sons of Hawaiian warriors. So this is a very, I think this is a very unique photograph because it shows a flag actually being used in the 1920s. So it's, it appears from this that the queen used this white standard as her personal flag just like her brother. And here we can see the queen with the white standard. So this photograph is, if you've seen the new uh, edition that has come out of the Hawaii story by Hawaii's Queen. This photograph is in there. This is actually from the collection, I think, of the Queen's Hospital photograph uh, collection. We can see Liliuo Kalani seated in front of the white standard. But as, we, uh, as I mentioned, the striped standard continued to be used as it was during Kalakaua's time. So we actually have some newspaper accounts um, from the Queen's reign that talk about the striped flag flying over the palace. Um, we also know from the early 20th century that the striped royal standard was flown at Liliuo Kalani's Waikiki residence for her birthday, her 67th birthday, in 1905 as well. So both of the standards were used by the Queen. So to kind of sum up, uh, during the Kalakaua dynasty, we have the stripe standard that comes from the time of Kamehameha III, continuing to be used by all subsequent monarchs. Then the new white personal standard, which was used both by Kalakaua and his sister. In addition to these two royal flags, there were three other royal flags from Kalakaua's time. There was a flag for his sister, Princess Likelike, a flag for Princess Likelike's daughter, Princess Kaiolani, and a flag also for the king's wife, Queen Kapiolani, as well. Those three flags were all created in the same year, in 1885. So we'll take a look at those. This is the standard of Princess Likelike. Okay, so what can we see with this flag? We see it follows the same general pattern 
that we saw with the other royal standards. All right, so if we have the stripes, we have eight stripes, just as in the stripe standard as well. But notice, of course, the stripes are all red. So it's a different coloring than is used in the national flag. Um, also, like the royal standard and the king's personal standard, we see the crowned a shield from the coat of arms in the center. There is a surviving example of this flag in the Bishop Museum. However, it is not on display. Uh, but there are some photographs of it. And there's a very interesting photograph I don't have it in this uh, presentation here, of Kauai Ha'o Church for Princess Ka'iolani's funeral, showing what looks to be on one side of the altar this flag for her mother, and on the other side, Princess Ka'iolani's flag as well, which we'll see uh, in, a, in a few minutes. From the image that is in the Bishop Museum archives, the coat of arms looks quite different. Here I've put the standard coat of arms uh, in the center, but again, every flag was done individually to know exactly uh, the reasoning and images sometimes in the central images is a little bit hard to know for certain. Princess Like Like's daughter, Princess Katyu Olani, also had a personal flag as well. Um, this flag is also adopted in 1885, and it's also part of the same flag family. So we see crown shield in the center uh, with a coat of arms. There is also a uh, actual flag that exists today. It's also in the Bishop Museum and like the other one is not on display. Some of them are very large as you saw on the display. There is a newspaper account of Princess Like Like's flag flying from the, a steamship and how large it was uh, when it was on display. And both of these two, Princess Like Like and Princess Ka'iolani's flag, were designed by Robert Louis Stevenson's, oh, I want to say stepsister. One of the Stevenson family uh, actually designed these flags when she was here. So again, the coat of arms, it's not entirely clear from the photographs. It, is, it looks a little bit different from this. Um, the meaning is not entirely clear. Also, you can see it's a little bit different because instead of having a striped background, it has a solid colored background. So what we can see with the four flags that I've mentioned is a flag family, right? So they're all kind of related in the sense they have similar imagery. They all have the coat of arms in the center, and they're surrounded by a striped or solid background. The last Hawaiian royal standard I want to mention is not part of the family of four. And this is a very unique flag that was for Queen Kapi'olani. Adopted in 1885 also, it was the same year as Princess Like Like and Princess Ka'iolani's flag, but it looks quite different. Some challenges, no photograph yet. If anybody has a photograph, <laughs> make sure you let us know. There is no existing photograph of this flag, so it's a little bit difficult to know exactly what it looked like. Um, but there is some evidence, partly based on the four flags that we looked at, that it might not have exactly been a royal standard, but a special banner, because it looks quite different from the other flags that we took a look at. So let's look at the flag itself. This is sort of an artistic uh, representation of what it looked like. The flag first appeared over Iolani Palace on the uh, 12th of February, 1885, which was the second anniversary of Kalakawa and Queen Kapi'olani's coronation. A newspaper article describes it as, there was hoisted yesterday over the palace, not only the royal standard of Hawaii, but a new and very beautiful flag in honor of Her Majesty the Queen. The flag is of silk and bears the name Kalaualani, the day of rain from heaven. Another a newspaper article from the time gives a little bit more information about what the flag may have looked like. It says, this morning, precisely at 8 o'clock, a very interesting ceremony took place at the palace. A few minutes before the hour, a detachment of soldiers marched from the barracks with the royal standard and a new flag for Her Majesty Queen Kapi'olani. As the clock struck 8, they were hoisted up on top of the building. 
the drum corps playing from the barracks. The queen's flag, which was hoisted for the first time, is a very handsome one. It is a white ground, in the center of which is a red circle with the inscription Kala Ualani, the whole of which is surmounted by a crown. Okay, so this is an artistic representation of what it might have looked like. This is the only description of this flag that I'm aware of. And since we don't have photographs and we don't have any surviving examples, all the specific details are not known. Did the crown really look like this? We added some little Victorian touches to the uh, circle. Yeah, exactly. So it's unclear whether it exactly looked like this, um, but it may have looked something similar to this. So um, the basic description is what was given in 1885. Now I want to do uh, something to put these flags into a context. So how do Hawaiian royal flags fit in to royal and, pers and presidential standards from other countries? Especially to look to Europe because the idea of royal standards goes back to the Middle Ages in Europe. Now in certain ways the Hawaiian royal standards are following very similar patterns to what we see in Europe. But we also see some uh, differences and unique features as well. So what are some of the similarities? Remember the three flags I showed you at the very beginning that didn't look anything like the Hawaiian royal standards, but are actually in some ways quite similar. The first thing is using the national coat of arms on the flag. So do you remember that, especially from our family of four, we have the coat of arms in the center of flag. In fact, today, almost every uh, European royal standard has a version of the coat of arms in the center. So it fits into uh, a standard practice for royal standards. It's not always done in the same way, but the royal standard incorporates oftentimes a coat of arms. So when you look at that, it doesn't look like the Hawaiian royal standard, but this is actually the British coat of arms on a flag. So this is technically called a banner because it has taken the coat of arms and placed it directly on the flag. There's no other uh, elements, there's no crown on the top, there's no background, but we can see that in, in a lot of ways it is actually very similar is it has the coat of arms uh, in the center there. The second area of comparison is to look at elements from the national flag. Also with almost every European royal standard, although this, although this one is an exception, you see elements of the national flag. So that could be, for instance, the use of the same colors that were used in the national flag. And we saw that with the Hawaiian striped standard, right? the same colors that are in the national flag. Another way where we can see elements from the national flag is in terms of design, right? Some of the same design elements are used in royal standards and national flags. So actually, if you remember that description that I gave back from 1845 about the registration of the flag, so to speak, in London, it talked about the national symbols being used in the flag. So the national flag for the stripes and the national coat of arms used in the center. So if we look here, so this is the Russian presidential flag. Design-wise, it's very, very similar to the Hawaiian flag. You can see the three stripes. Those elements come from the Russian national flag. So you might have seen a Russian flag. It's white, blue, and red. So the background is the same as the Russian national flag. And look what's in the center, the coat of arms. Right? So we can see the design elements are actually very similar. So even though this flag is from 1994, it uses the same type of pattern that was actually used even in the Hawaiian royal standard from the 19th century. And we go back to the, oops, what happened to my, let me just go, I have it here at the beginning. If we look at the US presidential flag, it's also the same. Right? We see the coat of arms, or the sh uh, shield of the president, which is a version of the great uh, seal of the United States, on a, co on a color background. Right? Just like we saw the kingdom coat of arms on a solid background, for instance, for the white standard, or for Princess Kaiulani's standard as well. 
So does this mean the Hawaiian royal standard was based on European patterns? It's hard to know for sure because the written documentation doesn't specifically say that. But especially if the person who designed it was an officer of the British Royal Navy, he might have been thinking about the British royal flag when he put the standard together. But we also saw from our talk about the different standards that the Hawaiian royal standards were unique. Right? They used elements that were unique to the Hawaiian flag. So I hope we've been able to see today the international context of Hawaiian royal standards and also their development from the 19th century from the reign of Kamehameha III to the reign of Liliuokalani Kalani as well. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. <laughs>
uh, standard that was used by the military. And so it was a word that was basically created to talk about the scientific or academic subject of flags. And there are actually international conferences every year by the International Association of Vexiology that will do, you know, for instance, a whole program on Japanese postal flags from the 1880s or something like that. So there are people who study it at a very... Uh, Yes, yes, they do have, there's a whole flag center and the International Society of Exeology that talks about uh, protocol for flags and even charts about which flags are used for which purposes on land, on sea, on what government buildings, what their dimensions and sizes were. It's much more regulated than it used to be. If you saw the flags in there, you saw they were not consistent in their dimensions. They varied quite a bit. Uh, but there are, if you look at national flags and you look at books and manuals, it will tell you all the specific dimensions about what flag would be used on land, what flag would be used on sea, what would the proportions be. So yes, they, could, they would have information on all the different countries. And, how, and books from the 19th century show some of these flags. German flag books that listed all of the flags around the world from the 19th century have images of the Hawaiian royal standard. Their correctness is hard to know because they probably didn't have access to real images, but were reading descriptions. But you do see, I saw a German flag book from the 1880s that did have images of Hawaiian royal standards in it. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think one thing that, if you want to look at the context from the 19th century, there are, there are some people who have reproduced some of these flags, and you will see people carrying them. But in the 19th century, the time of the monarchy, a private citizen would not have had the royal standard. So even in like Great Britain, or even in the United States today, technically you would not be allowed to display a personal flag that belonged to a king or a queen or to a government official. Um, in some countries, it's pretty strict about who can use certain flags. And in fact, there are certain rules that there are, there, in the US you don't have this, but in a lot of countries you have a government flag. So that would be the flag with a coat of arms in it, and it would only be flown by officials of the government. Private citizens would use other flags. So I think in just the Hawaiian context, you have to think about, is it what is, this, what is the context of flying something like a royal standard? It would have been something exclusively for the use of the monarchy. Yes? Well, generally, as it is in Europe, I believe, I, it's my opinion that the, uh, the adaptation of having a personal standard was because of their travels to Europe. Yes, and yes. Because you know, the, the kingdom was well into its position in the world. But that the personal standard was flown, wouldn't it mean that that royal is present? Yes, so yes. To have them all over the place is unbelievable. Yes, right, right. So it would have signified the actual presence, right? So if you look, for instance, if you ever see a video of the queen arriving back at Buckingham Palace, there is actually someone on the roof of the palace with a radio. And at the moment the car goes in the gate, the royal standard goes out. Right, and it will come down. And another thing that, I don't know if it's the case with uh, Hawaiian royal standards because there are no photographs of it, but it, it would never be flown at half mast because the monarch is never dead, right? So, you know, there was a big controversy after Princess Diana died because the royal standard was flying over Buckingham Palace all the way at the top of the flagpole. And some people thought, well, that was an insult to Princess Diana. But that's the proper protocol. The royal standard is never flown at half mass. Yes, well, some of them knew that. But that's why now the queen is given authorization for the British flag to fly, the regular Union flag to fly when she's not in residence. And that flag can be put at half mass. But the royal standard never, because the monarch is never dead. Right? There might be changed, right? The monarch might be changed, but is never dead. Okay, well, thank you again. So, oh, you have another question? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> real quick. Photographs surviving of the Pilani's funeral. 
There are some, but not, if you look at some of the funeral photos, they don't all involve flags. So that's one thing that was, I think, very interesting to find this photograph of Kwai Hao Church for, Queen Kapi, uh, for uh, Princess Kaiulani's uh, funeral. Because if you look very careful, it's not really clear, but if you look up in the top, you can see Princess Like Like's flag, and I'm almost sure you don't see enough of the room to see uh, whether it is Princess Kaiulani's flag, but it looks like it. One thing that's always hard is because they're not in color. Right, so the red would not stand out against a brown or a blue or something like that. But they were not always used uh, for funerals and not necessarily placed like on the casket, but displayed uh, like in a church or something like that. Okay, well, thank you again for coming and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you.